The following opinions are solely those of Boatest.com and its test captain. Hi, I'm Steve from Boatest.com, and today I'm going to conduct a sea trial and performance evaluation on a cruising downeaster, the Backhoe 32. I really have to appreciate how the fit and finish even extends to the operational characteristics of the Backhoe 32. For example, take a look at this transom corner. Notice how the exhaust is integrated into it. Just up above, 8 inch pull up cleat. And this is one of four cleats to each side of the boat. The three continuing forward are 10 inch. Just inside the entry to the cockpit at the transom door, TV connectivity and two 30 amp shore power cords. Down in the cabin on this F bulkhead, Here's the ship's main electrical system, 110 to one side, 12 volt to the other. Access to the side decks is to both port and starboard, up two steps. There's a grab handle at the front that's also doubling as support for the overhead. Notice that there's runoff on the side deck, channeling water overboard. And as we make our way up, there's a grab handle at the top. 20 inch rail height increases to 28 inches as we move fully forward. As we get to the bow, there's a recessed area for the ground tackle that includes a stainless steel anchor roller with a plow anchor on top. This whole recessed area has drains in the back, so it's not going to collect water. There's a quick windlass in the center, foot controls, both left and right, and we've got a cleat just alongside for securing the road. Just behind, there's a hatch with a lift and lock latch. Thank you very much. And this gives us access to a storage locker, including access to the road locker just ahead, and there's an anchor washdown. Now, there are a couple other features that are not escaping me. For example, all of the non-skid is a different color, so you can easily see where the non-skid is, and you don't have to worry about whether you're stepping on a non-skid surface or not. Plus, this trunk cabin is curved at the top so that it's channeling water off of it onto the side decks and overboard. Take a look at this overhead. The hatch slides back instead of opens up from the front, so you don't have to worry about reaching way up high to get it open or close. It's just an easy slide and then a close and latch. The elevated platform for the radar antenna is reinforced and it also provides a wiring channel for the two antennas to the sides. The main deck is hinged and it lifts to give us easy access to the engine compartment. It's electrically actuated with a switch over on the starboard bulkhead. With the engine hatch in the fully open position, we're limited just by the seat back coming up close to being in contact with the overhead, but even with that, it gives us an opening 32 inches high, plenty of room to access this engine compartment. And looking inside, there's a ladder that comes down to the port hand side of the Cummins QSB 6.7 425 horsepower engine. Just below the ladder, there's the water intake, which is clearly labeled, and then an oil change system just to the left of that. Water tanks, one to each side, 38.5 gallons each, and I can see that there's a blue crossover line going all the way over from one to the other, so they balance themselves out. And fully forward, there's a T-fitting so that we can drain both of them and, in fact, winterize the system easily enough. There's a hot water heater just ahead of this water tank. Fully forward on the front bulkhead, there's a fuel filter, a fixed firefighting system, more water intakes that are all clearly labeled. Batteries are just behind the starboard water tank, now, I'm sitting on a bulkhead, and just behind this bulkhead is the 185-gallon fuel tank, and that gives the boat a good sense of balance because most of the weight is fully forward. But we can access the fuel tank from this compartment right here, and additionally, in this compartment, got the 7.5 kW generator. I can see the generator intake and the underwater exhaust fully aft. I have easy access to the steering gear and the power assist steering pump. Now a secondary access point to the engine compartment is right here next to the helm station so that we can do our daily engine checks much easier. It's accessed by a turn and lock latch. And take a look at these custom logoed engine vents on the side of the cabin. Now these being on the side makes me question whether water will get into the engine intakes and the answer to that is clearly no just by looking at it closely. The ventilation is going up and above, way up high, and the lower area is dammed fore and aft, and there's a drain to the back, so any water that does get into this gets channeled right away. Nothing gets into the engine room. Taking a look at the helm, nicely laid out. We'll start at the top and work our way down. We have a compass directly in line with the steering wheel. The boat will come from the factory with the panel blank, and you can populate it with electronics of your choice. In this case, we have a 24-inch panel with 15-inch screen and then two ancillary screens on the side, one a multifunction display and the other the autopilot. Rocker switches are below and to the left, and I like that the horn is separated in red. 
the Cummins engine display, ignition, engine control. Below and to the left, joystick control from side power. The bow is standard, the stern is optional. Trim tab controls. The steering wheel is mounted to a tilt base. And I love the wood trim on the wheel. VHF below and to the left. More rocker switches over on the right hand side. To the side bulkhead, a lockable door leading to battery switches. Just behind, the helm seat swivels, slides, upholstered in ultra leather and includes flip up armrests. Down below, there's a flip down footrest that's got multiple positions it can be adjusted into. And then down below that, for us vertically challenged captains, there's a platform that can be taken in and out. I'd like to see that be in a fixed position and flipping up and down. Now this is the definitive cruising couples boat. There's gonna be two people on this boat, which means one's gonna be driving, the other's gonna be helping, observing, and to help with the navigating, the top of the cabin door has a ridge, so we can put a chart book on it. Now we've got two people taking care of the navigating. Now when it came time to get underway, I found that the Back Hove 32 is exceedingly easy to operate single-handed. Just make the midship line the last to come off, and it's simple maneuvering of the thrusters to slide away from the dock. Once clear, engage the main and off you go. Simple as that. Now, here's something I didn't notice during our initial inspection. There's a shelf to the side bulkhead, and if you put your foot there, it's extremely comfortable to use your knee as an armrest for more precise control of the engine lever. Turns out, it was by design, and I have to say, it's a good one. So let's get to the numbers. The Back Cove 32 has a length overall of 37 feet, a beam of 11 feet 10 inches, and a draft of 3 feet. With an empty weight of 15,300 pounds, 81% fuel, and four people on board, we had an estimated test weight of 17,310 pounds. With the 425 horsepower Cummins turning a 24 by 25 four blade prop and spooled up to 3,000 RPM, we reached our top speed of 26 knots. At 80% load, we were turning 2,600 RPM and 21.6 knots. That produced a 16.6 gallon per hour fuel burn and a range of 217 nautical miles. Of course, this is a coastal cruiser, so slowing down increases the range significantly. 473 nautical miles at 8 knots and over 700 nautical miles at 6.7 knots, all while still holding back a 10% reserve of the boat's 185 gallon total fuel capacity. We reached planing speed in 6.5 seconds and accelerated to 20 miles per hour in 9.9. .9. As for her handling, it was outstanding. We went out and found some stacked three and four footers and had a ball charging through them with no pounding and nothing on the boat rattling or creaking. It was a solid feel with a comfortable ride. Upon returning to the dock, we again had impressive maneuverability with a stiff crosswind showing no problem to the dual thrusters. Even with the standard bow thruster, she's easily handled as she's so responsive to the rudder. Basically, everything about her handling is forgiving. So that is our sea trial and performance evaluation of the Back Cove 32. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.